Okay, one more big idea before I let you go. And I'm going to introduce this with a little bit of a review. If Jeff is moving at 5 meters per second relative to this boxcar, and the boxcar is moving 30 meters per second relative to the sidewalk, Greg standing on the sidewalk thinks that Jeff is going how fast? 35. Now, what if Jeff is going 5 meters per second to the left relative to the car, and the car is going 5 meters per second to the right relative to the sidewalk? Yeah, it looks to Greg like Jeff isn't going anywhere. The, the car's going out from under him, but he's just right there all the time where he always was. Hold that thought. Suppose we take my old car, my Chrysler Cordova with rich Corinthian leather, and we lift it up on this uh, car uh, lift that has wheels. Okay? Now, we get that thing up in the air, and it's not going anywhere, it's just sitting there. But we turn on the engine, and we put it in gear, and we get the wheel turning. Now turn to your neighbor and explain to them why that arrow is not only wrong, but sick and wrong. Sick and wrong. Okay, vectors, no matter what they're representing, have to be straight. Vectors only give one direction, not a whole bunch of directions, just one direction. And so I have to have a, a straight vector, and if this were my omega vector for this wheel, what direction would it point? Into the board, into the board. Now suppose I take a piece of uh, a blue marker and I mark a piece of rubber at the top of that wheel with blue ink. That blue ink would be moving relative to the car, uh, if we believe what we learned with the Sven brothers, it would be moving at a tangential velocity of r omega. If I take a red marker and make a, a mark at the bottom of the wheel, that red mark would be moving with a tangential velocity, r omega. Now, with the wheel spinning, if I were to lower that car, listen carefully to what we hear, as I dip to the ground, yeah, that's what you hear. It's kind of like when the Knight Rider comes down off his truck there. That's not what you want to hear when you're driving unless you're a 16-year-old male. Okay. Now, what you want to hear when you're going down the road is you don't want the rubber to move relative to the road. You want it always to be just nooks and crannies to nooks and crannies uh, meshed with the road. So suppose I get behind this car while it's up and I push on it. It's got wheels. And I get it going down the road, and I get it going fast enough so that when I lower it down, I don't hear screeching. How fast am I going to have to get that going in order to not hear screeching? Think of this example. How fast does this have to be? R omega. R omega. And that's the rolling condition. It should be called the rolling without slipping condition. But what it does, it relates the linear motion of the car down the road to the angular motion of the wheels on the car. And it's more general than that. We just showed that if we know the linear velocity of the car, we know the angular velocity of the wheels. We just have to multiply by the radius. Well, it turns out because of our operational definitions that the angular acceleration of the car, linearly, will be the angular acceleration of the wheels with this radius of the wheel. 
And also, if we want to know how far we get down the road in meters per second, that's going to be how far the wheel turns times the radius. That radius is the translator, if you will, between the rotational variables for the wheel and the linear variables for the car itself. You're going to need that for a lot of problems in your homework and on the exam. Okay, have a good evening.